Hey guys, and welcome to how to paint pale skin on a Soul Blight Gravelord's Vampire. So I haven't done one of these Hobbitist videos in a little while, so I thought I'd, uh, you know, break out the camera and, and get one done. So, you know, um, if you've been watching any of the videos on the channel, you'll have noticed that um, I've been doing a lot of Soul Blight uh, miniatures and uh, a lot of those in those hobby uh, chat videos so in, my, in the hobby videos and um, I've done a lot of pale skin uh, but I haven't actually shown I guess a video where we just focus on it and uh, go through the process of actually doing that separately as a video so I thought today we'd go through that for anyone that's interested in in that type of pale skin and I thought it was a really good one to do for a hobby tips video because it takes you through some of the basic principles of building up colors uh, on flesh tones and doing a uh, very simple color glazing into that to give you shadows and, and, and variety on the surface and so I thought that would be a, a good place for people that are interested in this type of thing to, to have a go at uh, and it's always really cool on a vampire I mean you can't really go wrong it's a really safe subject to, to treat when you're learning uh, how to paint flesh you know monsters creatures uh, pallid tones like that are actually a lot of fun because you can't really yeah go wrong so we're going to be doing it on this one here which was one of the the new release models that came out recently uh, from GW and um, it's a really cool vampire, I like it a lot. It reminds me of the old uh, Necrarch vampires from uh, old Warhammer Fantasy days and uh, I really enjoy this one so I'm going to have a lot of fun painting it. But um, we're going to, in this video, just stick to the flesh. You'll see the finished model at the end and I'll do an overview and so on. But we're going to be using a few colours. So what have I got? We've got some Einrach uh, flesh here. Uh, skin tone from Citadel. We've got uh, like a sort of a, a neutral or cool grey here from uh, Vallejo Game Color, and we have uh, my classic uh, one that I love to use all the time, which is Grimnar Purple. We'll be using a little touch of that. That's mostly for the glazing, and then we've got some white, obviously, and then in the background here we've got some crimson, purple, and dark blue. Uh, ink washes or, or shades from Citadel to use as some little extra color glazing right at the end and and this will give us uh, a nice dynamic uh, surface so you'll have lots of darks and lights but there'll be a, a variety of colors so yeah this is this is really cool so I guess uh, grab yourself a model strap yourself in and uh, let's get started Okay, so the first step is we want to base coat that skin. So we've got that cool gray that I'm using from Vallejo and just really just uh, putting a nice thin coat on. So a few drops of water in with the paint, uh, getting it to, to spread evenly and you're just building that up. You might have to do a second pass. So you'll see me just go around and, and start to pick out those flesh areas and that's going to give us our nice, you know, pale skin base to build up from. And uh, one thing that will be really important later is um, we're going to be cutting back in. So you're going to see me in a moment. We're going to come in with the black and cut back in around the areas where the skin meets other surfaces. And the reason why you do that now and not later as you're seeing me do now, is that um, it can be hard sometimes, especially when you have a lot of uh, small details on the flesh, to go back and re-black those out later or put them in different colors and still maintain a separation of color from one to the next. So uh, especially for power colors as well, it's going to be hard to match it. So we basically just go in, uh, do the base coat for the skin, and then uh, cut back in with the black to, to fix up those little transition areas between skin and other surfaces, and that should give us a good result. Okay, so once we've got the model to this point, you can see now by cutting in with that black and um, redefining the, the base tone for the flesh, it just makes it easier to see. And you know, you're gonna be much more prepared now to, to move on. So um, it's very hard to go back later and recut in all of those little details, especially on a model like this. If your model's a lot simpler, then it won't ma matter so much, but um, you can do those kind of things at the end when you're doing the other details. But when you're um, doing something with so many overlapping parts and so much uh, interconnected elements with the flesh, you really wanna cut back in and, and give that, uh, that definition to those areas because it's just gonna make things easier. And and yes, you will go back and probably, you know, uh, make mistakes and overpaint and so on, but it's going to be easier than if you leave it all to the end in, in the case of this type of model. Uh, so yeah, if, if, if you've got something really simple where it's, it's just all flesh, then obviously that step you won't need to do, but in this case we do. So now we're going to move on to the actual layering and, and building up of the skin. So um, if we have a look here, you know, I've built in some of that Einrach skin, I put it down and just added a little bit of uh, grey in here just to do a slightly darker tone than the actual um, the, the color itself as you can see so we've got one two three four five tones up and then a little highlight one at the end and that's just adding 
this middle one here is basically the straight iron rock skin and then this uh, fourth one fifth one and sixth one have a little tiny bit of white added in and you're just getting lighter and lighter so it's a gradient as you can see and so that's that's where you want to begin there's not any water added to this this is just the paint and so then when we come in to do our painting with our brush we're going to add a little drop of water into here just to just to thin it down slightly as we go so you're not going to do straight uh, paint from the pot you're going to you're going to add a couple of drops in just to keep it thin and then we're going to build up through these through these steps as we're going to do now but that's just where you want to begin and get yourself started and um, then yeah let's get on to painting some flesh Okay, so now that we've got a good base to begin with, we want to start building up the, the flesh tones. And so, you know, you can see my gradient. I've started from a dark base and built in that iron rock flesh all the way through up through the greys into the mid-tone, which is basically just iron rock flesh and then, uh, or skin, and then uh, moved in with the white to get our last our last uh, highlight colours and then and then final highlight at, at the end. And so you're going to see me just go through and, and paint up the, starting with the broadest area on each muscle group and painting that with the dark darker tones and then you're progressively moving up towards the top surfaces of each of those muscles and and building towards the light so you imagine that the sun or, or whatever light source is hitting from the top and then you're um, painting in that way so you're just seeing me build up the, that that shape to to give light to that surface and make it really stand out and we're building up those tones now as you're seeing me move past the mid tone then what we're going to be doing is uh, basically be more selective about where the highlight is going. So the highlights are going to generally now move towards the, the very tops of, of, of the muscle groups and not on every surface. So, you know, the back of the thigh that's being hidden by by shadow or an underside of a, of, of a bit of anatomy, you don't need to highlight past the midtone. Now you can leave that and just focus the highlights mostly on the top, so the top of the biceps, the, the hands, the knuckles, but most importantly around the face. And so this is where you want to start to uh, coalesce your your attention, you know, you're highlighting uh, of these later tones, these two or three last highlight tones past the mid-tone, that's where we're going to be focusing most of our attention on and that's where most of the highlighting occurs because you want to draw people's eye towards that central point so you get the maximum uh, benefit uh, of that focal area. So those last couple of um, highlights as you're seeing me do are mostly around the face, the eyebrows, that T-section across the top of the nose, the top of the cheeks. It's, you know, fortunate when you're doing something like a vampire, they usually have very defined features. And so it's very easy to pick out where those highlights should be. You have very gaunt, you know, uh, cheeks. Normally on a female like this, it's, it would be difficult because you don't want to have so much shadow on, on the around, around the jaw area and so on. But because it's a vampire and it's a very sort of skeletal or very... Uh, uh, very muscular cut kind of vampire really uh, having that shadow is perfectly fine because they can be a bit androgynous they don't have to be like super female or super male they can be somewhere in the middle and that's really good for painting because it gives you a chance to explore uh, some of that shading work without it sort of ruining it you know often when you're doing a, um, a classic female you know uh, type it can be hard to get that nice soft naturalism in, in the shadows and so on because it's a very subtle work, but you don't have that problem with something like a vampire because it's closer to a monstrous creature that, that has a, you want more drama basically, more more lights and darks. And so you're just going to be focusing that highlighting as you're seeing me do uh, towards the face and, and getting that little pop, pop light uh, coming out there. And so that final highlight, when you're mixing the white in, you're looking for, you know, it's not going to be pure white, it's going to be an off-white closer to the iron rock skin but still quite light and you're doing little pin uh, spot sort of uh, highlights just on the very tops of the eyebrow the, the very end of the nose the tops of the ears you know the the, the ends of the knuckles and the fingers and that sort of thing but you and and in the case of this particular model if you're doing it you're also going to be looking at the uh, the collarbone and and the top of the chest there so we see a bit of uh, light hitting that so if the sun was above it would be directly hitting that spot because it's facing up and so we want to see a little bit of drama there a little a little bit of brightness uh, around it we're going to have you know a um, I guess a moody in my case this vampire is going to have a blue to green sea green sort of um, armor which is going to contrast nicely against the magenta tones that we're about to add in in the in the in the glazing stage of this but that's just going to help to to frame it and, and make this skin uh, really pop and come alive and that's what we're really looking for here just that nice drama especially on something like a vampire which is you know full of drama you want to see that 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 light
light and dark like you see in classic uh, you know movie covers of vampire movies you know there's usually like moonlight hitting the the vampire's face and everything else is shadowed so you want to really get that sort of drama and that sense of um, you know horror in your vampire and now we get to the fun bit. So this is the color glazing. So now that we've got our tonal range, okay, this is very monochromatic. It's a little bit, it's cool, but it's a little bit dull, right? So we want to add some color in here. And the reason why we've separated out, now there's different ways of doing this. You could add color glazes at other steps, but I like to separate out the, the tonal buildup of, of the form uh, separate from the color. So think of it like when an artist will do a grayscale sketch and then colorize it in Photoshop. You know, if you've ever seen an, uh, an artist do digital work, that's often how a lot of them will do it they'll they'll do a grayscale sketch so black and white and then they'll add the color later that's what we're doing here and it helps you to um, understand what's going on so the first step is the grimnar purple we want to get some of that purple tone in here because this is a vampire and it's and it's an undead vampire so we want to get a bit of that bit of that look so we're going to heavily water each of these these down so we want to water down the grimnar purple till it's very see-through lots of water three or four drops and then you're going to wipe off the excess off your brush and you'll see me just very directionally placing it in this isn't a wash we're going to go into where you know um, muscle groups meet into areas where the muscle and the, and the body meets another surface we want to see shadows undersides of things you know um, in the eye sockets that sort of thing underneath the the jaw um, under the bicep you know in between the hands the fingers and so on around the abdominals we want to see some shadow towards the base you know we're, we're looking for all those areas where we can directionally add it and then that goes the same for the magenta wash the purple and the blue we're going to add lots of water to each of these and you're adding them successively to increase shadows and increase drama with the color the purple and the blue especially are there to really help you you almost like black line uh, separate out the forms and give you lots of uh, deep shadowing so you're going to see me do that and it's basically a, a stage where you can play okay so we're starting from the, the, the this sort of grimnar purple which gives you an overall shadow and then each of the magenta purple and blue tones are your chance to decide on how much of each of these is going to be in your in your flesh tone so I've gone for I guess a more purple magenta tone but you could add more blue in if you wanted to you could even then add a further step of yellow I haven't added it here but that is perfectly legitimate and it's one of the main colors that you see in skin so that's more for areas where there's lots of bone coming to the surface so you could also add yellow in here as well and even green I've opted for no green because my armor is going to have a lot of green in it so I don't want to add that I want to have more the magenta and the purple tones to contrast against what I'm going to add later and that's something you got to think about what are the surrounding colors that you're going to have and make sure they don't blend too much in with that make sure it's it's got some sort of contrast and so then you should end End up with something really fun but certainly play with it keep it thin very lightly feather it in you're looking for a gradient a sort of nice gradual blend of shadows which have a bit of color in it so so keep it super super thin and do multiple coats if you need to but that should end up with a really great result and there we go power flesh done with glazing on a soul black grave lords vampire super easy so um, you know it's definitely something that you should have a go at um, it's a lot of fun it's very simple and as a, and as I've said many times on this channel uh, doing this simple color glazing into um, flesh like this is a great way to begin learning about color and learning how to get some you know a bit more uh, variation uh, in your skin and, and, and make it a more fun process and you can see how it contrasts with all the other colors that I've put onto this vampire but you know this this technique works on pretty much any, any flesh you know just a really nice little way to uh, improve your painting and get into color theory so I hope you've enjoyed this I'll leave an overview with a nice image at the end so you can see uh, how it looks with all the other colors together uh, but otherwise yeah um, please hit the like button subscribe button it really helps me out but I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one